Hello and welcome to Panthe the Geeks. You join us for another unboxing video regarding Salamanders. So we have the Salamanders Legion of Paraclasts squad there. We also have the Fire Drake, which come in a bag, not on a not in actual uh, pack. We've also got this model, which I don't know whether it'll be a Salamander or not yet. We got him when we were in um, Nottingham mm -hmm. in Ford World. It's the uh, Praetor and Cataracti Armour. I'm going to unbox him now because I want to have a look at him properly and get him stuck together. He may or may not be a salamander, I've not decided yet. Mm. But uh, there we go. And so we're going to unbox these three today. I'm going to start with um, these guys, actually. Start with the Terminators, Fire Bricks. These are the guys that you got for Christmas. Yep, the, these and these I got for Christmas. Uh, this guy's been sat around since we've been to Norton. <laughs> yeah. That's why I decided I'm going, to, I'm going to open him as part of this video. So, um, if you've seen the first video we did, that's the first part of my Salamander's army. This is the second part. Um, there's possibly going to be a vehicle added in as like a third part, maybe a Land Raider or a Leviathan Dreadnought. Haven't decided yet. Um, I keep rewriting the list a little bit, <laughs> tweaking it. Um, but for now, we'll get these two unboxed and the uh, Praetor. So, so we'll start with the Fired Rex. So let's have a look at the actual models. Some so we've got a bit of flash on that come off. So these are the legs for the terminators. All the detailing on the fronts actually. There's one of those. There's two like that. And there's two like that. We have the bodies there, the salamander's icon on there, we've got some more, it's actually some there. Are those shields? Yep, those are the shields. <laughs> oh, awesome. There's those three and those two. Uh, they are slightly different from each other. Yeah, they've got like dice numbers on the back, you turn yeah. them over they've got... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't even noticed that. One, two, three, four, five. Fair mm. enough. So we've got those on the back. And then we have the back parts of the Terminators. Got the three there and two there. So we've got six fronts and five backs. Oh, mm. I see. It's on the arms. On the arms? Yeah, not those arms, but the other ones that hold in the shields. Just noticed. Oh, yeah. So you know which shield goes with which well, arm. Yeah. I think that's quite clever actually. Yeah, I just thought it, it was out. if they wanted to play dice while they were waiting for a fight to begin a summer. That's summit, true, you know. they, they might want to, but <laughs> there we go. So we have the hammers. Oh, cool. Five hammers, and we do the two arms and the optional heads though. So there's actually uh, seven heads there. There you go, for the five guys. So there's plenty of options. The, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, with all, as with all resin models, we're going to take them off the sprues, we're going to give them a good soak, and we're going to get them ready to put together. So let's do that off camera. So I'm just going to put these to one side. And because we're doing all these Forge World models, we're going to soak them all together. So we'll actually do the unboxing of the other two, and then I can get them all prepped at the same time. Fluff there. Lots of fluff. Lots of fluff in there. Bag. So here are the pyroclasts. Uh, I'll clear up them for Okay. And while you're doing that, I'll open this guy. Then we get them all open and all prepped at the same time. Okay, so pyroclasts. So they yeah, come with the correct size bases, that's a good start. We have three backpacks there, and then the other two backpacks, so that's all present and correct. We have one body there, these are the different uh, bodies you get for them. I love the detail on these actually. Very cool. Two. 
Well, let's try and be really quiet in the background, obviously. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. There's the other two. And then the last one. There is the body for that. A bit of flash on there. We have the arms there with the salamander symbols on, all five of them. We have some uh, cabling there, or wires. It'll be uh, cabling for the flamers probably. They're a lot smaller than the, the ones with the heavy weapons, but I imagine they'll need bending into position. We have the uh, flame weapons there. And that. That's those five. We have the hands. A sword, a little bit of sword. Well, I'm definitely getting a sword because it just looks cool. And then we have some uh, melt bombs there. So that's the pyroclast. So we'll get them off and prepped, ready to stick together. Finally, we have the praetor. So we've got a sprue with the back part on both arms. See, it's got a vocalite. Is that a combi weapon? Yeah, bulky like combo, combo. Don't know which one that is, whether it's a charger or or what. I'll slide it up. We have the, the cool hammer that he's got, which is that. And we have the face there. There's a lot of detail in that face, actually. It does look very cool. And then the body itself is. There. What's that? I just found this actually in the. Um, yeah. It's a guide to building resin model kits. Oh yeah. Um, it's also got a check by date, so that was checked in September. That's all right. Um, yeah, but inside it's got tools and glues, assemblies, right. um, and how to cut them off and things so like that. So sort of guide preparation, checking and cleaning, which is obviously what we're about to mm -hmm. do. Um, Putting off the casting gates. Putting stuff in hot water. These. Yeah, stuff in hot water to bend yeah. them. Hair dryer also works well apparently. Yeah. And then priming and painting. That's priming. quite a handy little guide. It's a handy little guide if you've never worked with resin yeah. before actually. Yeah, good point. Well spotted, I didn't even see that. So we're going to go away and prep all these models and then we're back to stick them together. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you in a moment. Okay, so we're back. We've prepped the models. Uh, we've given them a good wash. And scrub up, if you will, mm -hmm. and taking them off the bases, uh, the, well, the gauges and everything that have been attached to them. They're called gauges, aren't they? Gates. Gates, even. There we go. I keep calling them um, sprues. Yeah, cast, cast, casting gates. Casting gates. There we go. There's the official term from the uh, Ford Wall Guide. Yeah. Casting gates. Or sprues if they were plastic. <laughs> but we've taken all those bits off. There's still a few little bits that I might need to find there. I'll do that as I go. Um, but the main things about this kit is these have got indentations. That one had a five, that one had a two, as Claire pointed out earlier. It looks like a dice. They correspond, there's the two, with these shields. There's a one, and there's a four, and a three, and there's the five at the end. So I'm going to stick that and that together so those arms are ready. We have six fronts. For the armour, five back, so we've got a spare front, that's the one that looks a bit different. So I'm like a good um, centurion slash sergeant type one, so I'll probably use that one. And then, so we'll stick them together, they just go back and front, like that. So I'm going to stick those bits together, and then these. Are the other arms, uh, the hammers, and the abs. I don't think there's any, there's no particularly ones that they go with, so they're just going to be stuck together. So then we should be ready to continue basically. So I'm going to get those sets together, the arms and the bodies, and then we'll be back. Okay, so we've got the bodies stuck together, like so. We're going to put them onto the different legs. And then we're going to stick on the shield arms. I'm actually going to put the hammers on last. I decided I'd have a wait and see what sort of position they were in. So literally we're just going to stick these together now because there's not much else to explain. The heads, as I said, the seven heads. The six heads. Um, <laughs> I'll find that one in a second. The six heads. So I'm going to be using the helmeted ones anyway. 
so those five. I'll go and retrieve the other one in a second. Um, so let's just get these together. So there are the fire drakes finished. They look very cool. Um, they're a bit uh, uncooperative in them sticking them together. So I had to uh, file down some of the joins, you know, to make like rough joins for the, the resin to stick. So it has been washed, so the oil should be off them. So it shouldn't have been the oil that was stopping it. But uh, again, I've just blue tacked them to the bases, like all the other models. Um, so it just comes off like that for now. You can see the, the detail on that. There's a lot of detail on them. They're really, really nice. Yeah. Um, they are. They're just so salamandra. Mm. They're, they're just completely covered with icons. I mean, not too much. Um, no, it's just but, enough, actually. It's just yeah. enough to make them stand out. Yeah. But very cool. Mm -hmm. Right, so now we shall move on to the pyroclast. Ooh. Okay, so here are the pyroclasts. So, what you need to remember with these guys is basically, if you look on each of them, that's got a five, that's got a five, it's got the same dice technique as the fire drakes. So that one is a one. And this one, I think, is the four. So you got one through five, basically. The arms have the same uh, four dots. Five dots. I want the end. I think it's three. Yep, three dots. And that goes for both arms. Both arms go on specific bodies. Uh, the hands, however, do not. So you can have any hands you want. In fact, you can replace one of the arms with a power fist, which is there. Which looks cool. So I think I will do. But there's no indication of which one you can do that with. And then you've also got a sword, which just replaces one of the hands, basically. So those are the options there. You also have the grenades, which I said earlier. I haven't taken them off the uh, the gauge, was it? Gate. Gate. I keep saying gauge for some reason. <laughs> Why? Gate. Um, sprue. Uh, until, so I didn't want to lose any of them. So I'll, I'll take them off as I use them. When you're cutting these bad boys off, they'll just be careful. There are three prongs coming off these. Which are going to go into those three tanks. One, two, three. So those two should fit like that. However, be very careful because if you cut it wrong, you will end up with that. And it'll snap off and fly off and you won't be able to find it. However, what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace that with a bit of uh, the sort of like sprue, if you will, mm -hmm. that was attached to the backpacks, which hold them onto the thing. Sprue. Gate. Gate. There we go. That's the way I was looking for. Uh, so I can, I'm just going to replace a bit like that because they're about the same size. And I should be able to sort of use a bit of green stuff just to keep that in. So one of them broke. The other four are fine. Um, so when you're cutting these off, because they're, they're in a big lump of resin, if you cut either side of that first, so cut there and cut there, and then cut the rest of it off bit by bit, I take each one of them off, leave the big bit of resin on, and then cut your way into it. That's what I did, bit by bit. And I used the clippers for that because um, the knife just couldn't quite into it. But if you could just get the knife along there, I'd cut that middle bit off first because there's, there's hardly any of it on there. If you look at that, it's almost non existent, it just flicks off if you're not careful. Um, but you do need it, so I don't think there's just two pipes, there's actually three. And they're not wide enough to drill. Uh, like the heavy weapons ones were, there's the other side. You could, I suppose, try and get a pin in there. I'm not going to because it's not very long either, so these are going to be bent round. So I think what we'll do, we'll just bend them round and then we'll leave them on. So it's going to take some bending. So if you go back and see what I did in the first video, it's pretty much the same thing I'm going to be doing with these. It's just if we get them bent in the middle and attach them up. But we'll have to see what they're like when they're stuck together. So, first thing to do is put both arms onto the right bodies and stick the backpack into place and then we can put those bits on and I'll decide which one I'm going to give the power fist as I'm doing that and then if I'm going to give one a sword I'll do that afterwards. So let's get them to that stage. 
Okay, so I'm just coming back at this stage. Uh, I've just bent the it's still wet actually. I've bent these uh, pipes around. They're not even glued onto the gun themselves. Uh, what I did, much like the previous ones um, for the heavy weapons, where I pinned them on, I just glued these on just with super glue. I made sure the bonds were pretty strong on them, and I left them overnight to make sure the bond completely dried before I put any water on it. And then I've come back and I've literally just put that in hot water, bent it around towards the gun, put it back in hot water and bent it there so it fits in and that's not actually even glued on to the gun at this stage I don't want to pull it too far back but that's actually fit straight into the hole it's meant to go in so the only one that these four I've just done the practice one went wrong uh, because I was trying to bend it around using more of the uh, hot air technique and it didn't bend quick enough and it snapped so it's actually shorter than the other ones and uh, there's a bit of green stuff there just covering the gap uh, and just as a bit of like wiring or piping there so I've just covered that one up um, so that one's fine so now we'll just stick on the other arms uh, just to look at the paraclast entry so the warden can have a power fist or a power weapon so the one that I designate as the warden I will give the power sword I think um, the power fist does look good though that's the power fist, but the sword looks. It just looks very nice. cool. The, the sword looks awesome. Yeah, just points wise, it's a bit cheaper. What's good use this on another Salamander's model? Then mm -hmm. might do that for me. We'll go with the sword because I suppose they all do have like melter flamers, and they've all got melter grenades as well, so melter bombs, which need to go on. So the other, I'm going to stick the other arms on and the hands. The one's going to get the sword. I'll probably put these old grenades on somewhere. And so when we come back, the squad should be finished. And there we go, the Paracross squad is finished. They are very cool models. Mm -hmm. I was surprised how easy it was to bend those pipes around. Once I figured out how to use them. Um, but as I said earlier in the video, just be careful when you're cutting them off. Those are really brittle parts. Um, and be careful when you bend them as well. <coughs> I would use hot water if I were you. Um, that's the method I used. Stick them onto the backpacks and then bend them round using a pair of tweezers. So next up we're going to move on to the Praetorian model, the Ford World only model. And that's the last model for this uh, video. So let's have a look at the parts. So these are the parts, there aren't many. So we'll just go through and we've got the front uh, part with the body. This back part has two little indicators of where that fits on. Which leaves those diamond shaped holes there for the arms to go in so they go in at a specific place just, you could cut that so like, there's a bit of give but not much you could cut that bit off and just put it however you wanted it but I'll just put it in the same position that it should be in you got the other arm which again has the same fitting and then the hammer goes on there the head fits into this area here and there's a bit at the front unlike the uh, the um, fire direct terminators there's a bit which will actually just allow the head to, to go in, but I'll still use a pair of tweezers to position that with the glue. And just out of interest, um, I was wondering this myself. Just put it back on. It should fit in. That's one of the spare fire direct helms. And that fits in there perfectly. So if I wanted him to be a salamander, I could actually switch the head around with the fire direct helm. I think the head, head's one of the things that doesn't make it like Salamander to me. He looks too grumpy. Although from the side, and he is bald. He does, he does look a lot like Vulcan in that respect. So yeah, maybe. I'm going to stick him together how he is anyway. Uh, but there's, a, there's an obviously a head conversion option there. The other thing I probably want to change is, is the weapon he's got. So uh, some more Salamander. Maybe even put a fire direct shield on there. That would be pretty awesome. Mm. So I might get another one and prefer them later, but this one's going together as is, just in case I don't ever get another one. I'm still not sure whether he's going to be a salamander or not. He, I'm a bit more sold than it never had a good look at the head. <laughs> the pictures of him didn't do, really do that justice. Um, so let's stick him together. Okay, so here he is. It's a very cool model, actually. It looks better than its picture, like a lot of models do. Uh, when I initially saw this, I thought, oh, it's all right. And I wasn't going to get it, but then, obviously, being at Ford World, I decided I'll get it and have a look at it. 
And I didn't think I was going to add him into my Salamander's army, but then again, I'm also having second thoughts about that now. I think maybe he'll be the general. What do you guys think? Should he be the general? Should I still convert Vulcan Heastan and have a power armoured leader? Or it might be both. But uh, what do you think? Should he be a Salamander? He kind of looks like Iron Warrior maybe to me. That was my initial thing. Iron Warrior, Iron Hounds were the first two chaps that came to mind when I saw him. But uh, what do you guys think? I'd like to know. Uh, I asked him in one of the previous videos. Uh, where is he? He's in nearby. Do you remember him? Yeah, there he is, the Doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, the best name I could come up with him was Dr. Smock. <laughs> I didn't tell Claire, did I? Dr. Smock. I asked you guys uh, what I should name him. And Please say something better. And uh, I've got Dr. Nick so far from The Simpsons. That was one of the comments. But if you can come up with any names for either of these guys, let me know. I've knocked him Hello, over. everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I am Dr. Nick. It could work. <laughs> I don't think the Death Guard would put the faith in him, though. He's going to be yeah, Death Yeah, not guy. really. Um, but any names for this guy, or what chapter, Legion, should I say, you think he belongs to the best. There we go. So let's have a look at all these models together for this video. So here they all are. So these are the new recruits to my Salamander's army. <laughs> uh, maybe the guy that be at the front. He might be the boss. Again, see what you guys think. See what I decide to paint him. I think he might be a Salamander after all. Well, we shall see. Um, so the next Salamanders video will probably be either uh, one way I'm showcasing them or maybe when I'm painting them. I haven't quite decided on what colours I'm painting them yet. I'm probably going to use the Forge World Vulcan Green. It's uh, it's a, it's, a, it's not as bright a green as the 40k sort of version of their armour. Mm. So I think I'm going to do that. I think it contrasts better with the bright flames that are on their armour. Uh, rather than having the bright green and the bright frames. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you need something think, dark. If you're going to do the flames quite brightly, you want a darker colour to contrast yeah. it against to make it stand out. You guys want, want me to show you the actual painting of them when I eventually decide what colours I'm going to be using. <laughs> Let me know in the comments and I'll see if we can do like a, a quick sort of wax paint, probably just for the armour and the flames rather than the whole model. And then next time we'll see these hopefully showcasing them mm -hmm. and next addition to the army will probably be March time around my birthday <gasps> if, if I manage to get something for my birthday we shall see um, it might be that Leviathan Dreadnought it might be a Land Raider mm. stay tuned uh, so thanks for watching mm -hmm. please like and subscribe it helps out loads and stay tuned for the next photo video which will definitely be the Primark the video mystery Primark. mystery Primark for the chapter we'll be doing once the Salamans are done which is Probably next year's 2018's project, <laughs> but the Primark will have now. So there we go. See you guys later. See you soon. Take care. Bye.